Well, hey everyone, it's February and February is Love Month. Pastor Tyler did a great job on Sunday and showing us what love looks like from the scripture. And 1 John 3.16 sums it all up. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. But John doesn't stop there. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And just in case we lack imagination, John lays out a concrete example in verse 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Well, I must admit I was brought up short on this question just this past Saturday when I was leaving No Frills. To get to my car, I had to pass between two individuals who were sitting on the sidewalk with cups in their hands. Well, my hands were full of bags, so I just looked straight ahead and kept on going. With material possessions, brother in need, love of God rattling in my head. Well, by the time I left Walmart, I have to confess that I felt compelled to go back and retrace my steps. Full love instructions follow in verse 18. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. There are three words in that verse that stand out for me. Words, actions, and truth. We want to take a look at all three of them this morning briefly. At first glance, it almost looks like John might be saying that loving words don't count. Really? Don't my kids feel loved when I sign off with love you to my emails or my phone messages? or my texts? Or won't my grandsons know that I love them unless I send a DQ card once a week? I kind of like the way Eugene Peterson explains it in the message. My dear children, let's not just talk about love. Let's practice real love. Hmm, real love. wonder why he says that. Well, John does agree that it's action that shows our love but he qualifies it by saying that words and actions must be done in truth. I think both of these men are saying that all actions aren't necessarily loving. It's true that sacrificial actions validate our loving words, yet they can't, we can't automatically conclude that the actions by themselves represent real love. Actions performed with ulterior motives are actually rooted in selfishness. What's in it for me? Will I get praised for this? How will I look to other people? Well, if any such thoughts are looking in the back of our minds, that's not a good sign. Sacrifices that are self-serving are not real love. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 is pretty descriptive. And again, I'm reading from the message. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's words with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love. I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Loving in truth then means that our actions must be sincere and pure without hypocrisy. You know what a hypocrite is, don't you? Someone who doesn't practice what they preach. I'm going to pull a uh, John here, not our John, but the um, author of First John, and suggest a few concrete examples of what genuine love looks like in practical terms. I guess we could say love in overalls. Here are a few suggestions. First of all, love is happy to serve when no one is looking, when no one will know who did the good deed. We have an opposite story in Matthew 6 of Ananias and, Ananias and Sapphira. They demonstrated a negative example. When they donated land, instead of doing it discreetly, 
They drew attention to themselves, and they even lied about how much they gave. Needless to say, God was not pleased. And you know what the end of that story was. Second thing, love acts with humility. It doesn't think of itself as better than others. It's willing to wash feet. In other words, to do menial tasks, maybe uh, take care of the garbage or scrub a toilet. Thirdly, a love looks for opportunities to appreciate others. Its words build others up, the way it's described in Ephesians 4. It's pleased when others get praise, even when it may feel that it deserves some praise too. Love extends hospitality without grumbling, and it doesn't worry about being thanked. It's generous and willing to help, even if the need is a result of someone's poor decision. One more thing, love seeks peace. When it's wrong, it apologizes. It forgives freely and lets go of hurt feelings, and even prays for the one who hurt. And just one more. Love sacrifices its own personal advantages for the sake of others. Uh, that could be uh, giving up uh, the de most desirable parking spot in case someone else would need it more. Well, we could go on and on, but Colossians 3.17 sums it all up. And it also provides the key, and this is important, the key that makes it possible. Whatever you do in word and deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. When everything and every moment is submitted to Christ, then what we say and how we act will progressively, not perfectly, but progressively harmonize with the example of Jesus. Whatever we do is not done in our own strength. That would, be, that would make it impossible, but it's done in his power. He is the enabler of loving in word indeed and in truth well that leaves us with one final question what are you thinking is loving in word and deed really possible does it really matter john would say yes it's the unmistakable unmistakable mark of a true follower of jesus and so we have a choice to either bear the mark of nothingness of fake love as described in first corinthians 13 or bear the mark of real love as a true follower of Jesus, the way 1 John chapter 3 describes. Well, while you're pondering that question, which I hope will take you with you, I want to bless you with a benediction prayer that's found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself, who loved us, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good word and deed. Amen.